Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Dream League Season 4. With myself, Odie Pixel, and Draskal here at the Caster's Desk for what's going to be the first series of the league play. Four Clovers going up against the side of Team Empire. Andy, how are you feeling? And are you looking forward to this one? I am looking forward to it, mainly because... Obviously, we're talking about the couch, how Empire weren't doing so hot lately. I even think you were checking some betting sites before the I game was started, seeing checking what the odds, the odds indeed. You know? And it was not looking great for Empire. I think it was something around 80-20, correct? It did go something towards like that. that. It started off kind of a bit yeah. more even, but yeah, people just went 80... Uh, no, sorry, no. It's uh, 65%. Oh, which one were they 80 for? Four Clovers. Oh, uh, okay. It was a different game. Never it was mind. a different game. I, I don't have my glasses yeah. on, so that's this far right. away. You're getting old. It's we're, fine. we're in like it's kaleidoscope going. range when yeah. it's about that far <laughs> away, so it wasn't great. But uh, interestingly enough, the first pick obviously going to uh, 4 CL this game, and yeah. they took the liberty of banning out Husker, which. It's an interesting. I mean, I guess Empire have proven in the past they're strong with it, but that is a hero yeah. that did get nerfed. Uh, of course, a 6.85, only slightly though. Obviously, just the Berserker's Blood resistance being changed down a notch. So, I think pretty much the stacks build up. Before it was something ridiculous, like you had like 98% magic I think resistance, it was max, yeah. and now it's about 85%. So there is a pretty significant change, but. Nonetheless, still feeling that it warrants a first phase ban. And I mean, I'm loving this already. I mean, it, it, we can tell it's 6.85 because we would not have seen, well, a lot of these bans coming out as, as, as early as this in 6.84. Lesh still, surprisingly, is still uh, one of the high priorities for these two teams. And the picks, it's been a quick draft so far. Night Stalker first pick, Andy. Yeah, I, I think the Night Stalker is more just a reaction to seeing the Earthshaker picked up so early. It's funny to me because a lot of teams, they ban differently in the first two, but they typically pick the same heroes. So you see a lot of Clockwork, you see a lot of Lina, you see yeah. a lot of Shaker as the, the first two material, at least in terms of picks. But in this game, Wisp is taken out. We already talked about the Husker, the Lesh. Uh, Darkseer also banned as well. Another hero who is seen time and time again. And Venomancer did receive a few buffs, which I think is maybe one of the more uncommon bands that you would look to see in the second phase nowadays. Brood certainly is. being probably one of the more standard of any of them. But uh, Team Empire obviously have ridiculously strong early game heroes right now. Night Stalker has some pretty uh, insane base health regen nowadays. I think he just got a little bit of a buff in that department. And then, uh, of course, you have Bane, who has some of the best stack gain of any support hero. So against a, a Shaker, now this could still be offlane mind you, because Sexy Bamboo plays a pretty baller shaker. We've seen that in the past, especially oh, does. commentating elimination mode. You had the opportunity to see that firsthand. <laughs> pretty insane. Uh, but at the same time, I think EGM sometimes picks it up as well, don't they? Yeah, they feel, it, uh... it does switch off, but yeah. I, I think it's more dependent on what they need at any given point. And I wouldn't put it past them to maybe go back a little bit and look towards maybe that Bambo Sand King. I'd love to see the. Oh, I, even at this point, the Bambo Spirit Breaker is a lot of fun as well, and we've seen what it yep. can do. I remember, I think it was the games that we were casting. Like every single charge in the team fights was huge. You'd always be able to prioritize the guy at the back of the fight, cross around, and pretty much bash the entire team, which is just incredibly disruptive in team fights in the mid game. Yeah, there was like a three or four man yeah. charge, I think, in one of the games, and it was just totally fight winning. So, totally on board with you there. I, I think the Sand King is nice too because. You get to a, a point in the game where what hero really can hunt the Sand King? That's really the issue that you run into when you have these types of heroes. Like maybe oh, yeah. the, the TA can blink in, but there's already so much disable that if you do that, you're kind of putting yourself really in harm's way. So we'll see how they want to deal with this. But Empire so far, uh, I like the TA pick. There's not really too many things on the team they have to worry about. And in a lot of ways, the Husker, the Lesh, and the Venomancer ban even Darkseer and Wyvern work out in your favor because these are all heroes who have some form of instance damage that's going to eat through the refraction. So every single one of those heroes that's banned actually just makes the pick even better. Ooh, that's an interesting one as well as we just saw picked up four for Empire. I, I've got to be honest, I'm loving this game already. This is yeah. some exciting drafts coming out. Doom, and now Doom did of course receive uh, some quite nice buffs. Uh, I believe it was the damage over time for his uh, Scorched, Scorched Earth was and crazy the, now. 48 the damage, at max level. Yeah, damage and healing both yeah. got buffed. So before before, I think it was 32 at uh, level 30, 4, 30 or 30, yeah. yeah. So it's actually more than 50% increased effectiveness at level insane. 4, which is nuts. It's so pretty it's pretty insane. much having like a radiance on steroids that makes you run faster and heal. So it's almost equivalent to level 1 chemical rage, which I think is 50 regeneration per second. This is 48. 
So it's not bad. <laughs> it's decent to say the least. It's pr and, and the nuke as well. The fact that the cooldown's just gone. I mean, that one second, you know, seven second cooldown on the level death nuke. You know, especially right. in the late game when you're you're hitting those, you know, the big damage numbers. You've been able to get out a couple of those in a team fight. It's it's pretty nice. And also just the fact that against Doom, of course, a lot of heroes do like to pick up the Lincoln Sphere. Suddenly you've just got a bit more accessibility to dispel that before dropping down the ultimate. So no, I think I think Doom is certainly in a good place and LC, I mean, this draft is just getting better and better, Andy. Everything about this draft just yeah. screams new patch. <laughs> like, the one thing that I find a little bit strange is we did we did talk about Doom a little bit, but yeah. you typically don't see it picked against heroes like Wraith King. Usually, Wraith King is seen as the pick after the Doom, you know? Because you Doom a Wraith King and he just comes back to life. Yeah. So it's usually seen as one of those targets that it's a deterrent. You know, it's like, okay, we're not going to Doom him. You know, we don't really want to waste the time. But interesting to see that the Empire okay picking it up, even in that circumstance. And they do have a very beefy front line, like between the Doom, the TA, and the Night Stalker. Usually Doom is seen as that hero who kind of picks up the aura items, you know, your drums, your your Vlads, or whatever. And then you just kind of fight five versus five, and they have a pretty good team for it right now. Whereas for Clover, the Legion Commander for me seems... It's not too bad. I mean, obviously having a strong dispel is going to be nice. You can isolate heroes out like that Templar Assassin, you know, the Night Stalker, duel them, try to get them killed. But I think they need a little bit more damage right now. It's, I mean, it's an interesting pick, I feel, because the Legion Commander, in terms of synergies for their own team, they've got Lena. You've got that massive damage mm -hmm. nuke to try and secure the wins. But obviously, Team Empire, with their final pick, they've got a Dazzle, who's going to screw you over a little bit. You've got to be a little bit scared of the Night Stalker, especially at night time with a 50% mischance with the Crippling Fist. It's going to make it that little harder to win the duels. And Bane, of course, one of those heroes that can be incredibly disruptive um, if there's not someone around to try and take the Nightmare out of the fight, because it's just going to cycle between the two of you, and it's going to be very hard for Bambo to win the duels. But saying that, it is Bambo on this hero, and if anyone's going to make a Legion work against this lineup, it would be Bambo. Yeah, it's such a hard game, though, like you already mentioned. I mean, Dazzle Grave, too. Mm. It, it, the thing with Grave is you pretty much can cast it at any point after the duel starts, and it's going to prevent damage from being given to the LC. Yeah. So unless you yourself are the recipient of the duel, you're not going to be having a great time. No, not at all. I, 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 but as I said, I think it's uh, all said and done. This is going to be a really exciting game to watch between these two teams. And uh, just game one as well. I'm hoping we're going to see some more crazy drafts going out in game two. And I think, as you said, being a new patch, a lot of teams, they're going to be using these early stages of tournaments just to find what really is good. Obviously, a lot of people can do patch analysis. They can look at the uh, the numbers and stuff. But it really kind of takes to, it, to play these heroes in a competitive situation before you really find what's going to be kind of at the front of this meta. Right. And this is going to be a perfect example of that. Yeah. Is right now, we see the, the double mango resolution night stalker here um i don't think he's gonna be in too much trouble from this i could try and block Maybe him eating off a stun or two. see what ejm is able to do here but just look. waltzing around oh lena's here as well they can get a light strike okay. to follow up okay. which they do resolution and a lolly triple pike cat coming in as well they're gonna get it the way of swift ending and ns just getting caught out a bit. The triple stuns perfectly executed there by the side of four Clovers. And yeah. they're going to be very happy with that start. He definitely wasn't expecting them all to be there. I actually thought that for a second he would just go into the trees because it's much harder to anticipate where you go when you're in that tree line. And unfortunately for Resolution, he will fall here. Oh, Bambo. Is he uh, going to do it here? Bambo. A... No, he did it. He got it. Wow. And he's out. Nice. <laughs> Very, very nice. Classic Bambo way to start the game there. There's Waltz is in front of three heroes. Says, thanks for the bounty, Rune. And uh, they didn't get the bottom one, did they? Uh, oh, no, they did, didn't they? Yeah, uh, they got both. They yeah, managed they to get it the way of Viper yeah, as well. Got the other one. Nice. Nice start there for Four Clover indeed. And well, let's talk about the lane. So mid lane, you've got this Viper versus TA. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to feel that Yoku's going to have a hard time. And also worth noting as well, back in the past, Yoku used to be the off laner for Empire. They're putting him in the mid lane against Pycat Viper, which yeah, this is going to be tougher. I'm a little bit confused about that myself because I know the Resolution was widely considered one of the best mid players in the CIS region or even Europe in general, but I... Maybe it's a hero comfort factor because I know that Resolution plays TA, but maybe Yoku is not really as familiar as to how to play the Night Stalker. Maybe they just feel like it's it's better to have the person who knows the hero better than it is to play the lane better. But no matter what, like even if Resolution was playing on this TA, playing against Viper is a nightmare, especially since they, they pulled PyCat to Sentry. So it's not really a hard lane at all in that sense. And then you got Bambo top here versus the, the Doom and the Dazzle, which 
probably won't have a lot of kill potential because press the attack should be able to keep you alive through the damage of the scorched earth and whatever goblet can throw in the way of maybe a, a random poison touch here and there so i think the laning phase is definitely going to be favoring four cl just depends on what this night stalker can do during the first night or second night phase yeah, absolutely i mean it, it's going to be interesting to see also um obviously this choice of legion on the off planet against the doom now doom what do you build on a, a position one doom on 6.85? Do you still prioritize the blink dagger? Do you pick up a Midas, just go for the farm game? What's going to be the plan here for doom? It's not often that you see the safe lane doom. That's the thing mm. that I'm kind of wondering myself. And you see a lot of it in pubs, but they're not typically the, the core role. They usually just go off lane. They have a tendency to build aura items and just kind of fight around and with the team because that Scorched Earth makes you such a tank that you can stay in close proximity and middle lane, Yoku getting pretty low here. And Pycat just forcing him right back. Still got that cell tank on him. Bambo, uh, he's got the boosted speed here. Won't be able to get himself back. It's going to bring him very low and he has run out of regen. No points in press the attack yet, so... I'm That's a little bit strange. Down. Yeah. He's, he's going for the full out new, yeah, with the two points in, uh, overwhelming so far. Uh, he's got his bottle now though, so oh, okay. he'll make his way back to base. Um, yeah, I really think that in these types of lanes where you're not really getting much auto attacks off, that getting any moment of courage early is a little bit... I mean, it's unorthodox. It's not to say that it's bad. It helps you jungle, obviously, if you don't want to stay in a lane anymore, but he is getting a lot of experience. So I feel like him being able to soak is probably more effective than going to jungle now. I mean, can we just appreciate how sad this TA is at the moment in terms of CS? Oh, dude. Two last hits here for Yoku compared to the 14 for eight. We knew it was going to be a bad lane, but... Yoku is is certainly struggling here. I mean, even to the point where, do you feel this is the best lane situation for Empire? Could they have done with switching something up? Maybe they could have put the Night Stalker Bane middle, and then just did like some kind of weird dual offlane. But it's it's hard, right? Because if you save the Viper for a last pick like that, and they're banking a lot on their TA and trying to make something happen with it, which I do feel like Empire are relatively reliant on that that it's very easy to just have one really strong lane counter and say, okay, well, now your laning phase is all of a sudden just bad. I mean, sure, Resolution's getting some farm. He's 13 and 1. Obviously, Silence got that safe lane position doom, so he's going to be getting a ton of money with the help of Devour. But if your middle lane gets shut down this hard, hmm. TA is not a good hero to play from behind. Yeah, I think uh, as we keep doing it, it's all about the Night Stalker and what he can achieve across the map. I mean, just even the facts, the Bambo, top lane, he's going. That's got a point here, he's going to trade hits here with Go Black, just forcing him back on the Dazzle. Bringing him low, a couple of points in the queue if he wants to throw in your cap. He's going to hold on to it, bottom lane, they managed to block Resolution off with a very nice Fisher here. We'll try and turn around, can he get around this gap? Yes, he can just squeeze through. So we'll be able to get himself out of that one. DD picked up by Lower Dance, denying the room from Lena. That's still 1-0 at the moment, four minutes in, and CS still favoring the side of Four Clovers, uh, by quite a bit across the map. Yeah, I think it's going to continue to look that way and still, or until people start moving around, you know. We're going to see another Hellfire Blast here. I think it's just mostly for harassment purposes at this point. And unfortunately, the stuns were a little bit oh, overlapped. Oh, that's a lovely fish. A light strike onto two. The Fire Blast will finish it. Now, Loa does try to keep himself alive with the Brain Sap and the Nightmare. It's not going to work. And this tri lane working wonders here for the Radiant. Yeah, the long range stun, catching them off guard. Very nice double fissure into a double light strike array. You really have to respect the killing potential of this lane, especially as the supports get levels. Is he going to teleport in here? Oh, they're not going to get him again, are they? I think they might do, but oh, the light no strike, he's incredibly low. Go Black, he has got the mana here for the shallow grave, but we're already seeing just teeping back into lane and being bullied straight back. Saxo's going to be able to salve up. Resolution trying to chase him around the tree line, but by the time he finds him, he's going to be back up to full health on the Lena. This is going incredibly well for the side of Four Clovers. Okay, why is Silence so low? I am really confused. Abambo is doing an absolute number on this off. He's level 6! He's and looking for a jewel, potentially. In. I mean, if he can get another Q off when Silence now not got the Scorched Earth. Nah, he needs more mana if he's going to do that. He has uh, no yeah, bottle charges yeah. right now. But, I mean, honestly, he can actually bully enough for top rune. I don't think Pycat has a bottle right now, so he's not going to be looking for the rune of itself. And Goblack is, right now, just bottom lane, so there's no other support to help scout the top rune. He's going to have full control of it. Yeah, we're seeing Yoku has backed off into the jungle, was just clearing up his stack, so he's managed to get himself a few CS, but he's sitting on the, on the brown boots on top of the ball, and Pycat just getting himself a free lane. You may see some kind of rotation from Empire come out now, as they have left the bottom. Aloha Dance just getting the stacks up on the ancients for TA. And uh, just hanging around the bottom rune. They're not going to get the good one, though. That's going to go the way of Pycat here. The Invis level 7 Viper Strike available. 
But he might want to be careful about going aggressive here, because there is a wraparound coming from Empire. And this Invis Rune might actually work in favor of Empire if it encourages Pycat to go aggressive on someone, but no. He just reveals it straight away, and, and he, he knows something's up across the map, and he's playing this very sensibly. I mean, they have a lane ward bottom, so when that lane ward doesn't spot anything, it's pretty easy to just put two and two together and think that there's probably a rotation coming in. And it's far less likely that they would try to gank Bamboo at this point in the game. I mean, sure, they can, but if they waste the resources on setting resolution top with the Bane, then... Yeah, yeah, he's living life on the edge. But. He does get. He was looking for potential rat round because they could just get selling it, but go black, moving back in. And uh, I mean, there's a doom as well, so they have to be aware of that. Yes. He's still going to hang around here, though, looking to bully them back, giving a lot of space for Bambo here, and he's going to be very happy with this one. 30 CS. He's nearly matching the CS of Doom, and Doom's had the backing of Go Black pretty much in lane for the entirety of the uh, the laning stage. Seven minutes in, Go Black. They've got full vision of him. This very nice ward that Saxon did manage to get down. And the sentry, I believe, won't catch it. And he's dug deep here. He's hiding right in there. And he's going to be able to find it. But the Doom comes out in time. So there isn't going to be a duel. Now they're trying to turn it. Light Strike catches out Silent. He's going to heal back up with the Scorch Elf. And they might just find Bambo. The Doom is still on him for a he's good few dead, seconds. Yeah. One more slash. Should bring him down to let the damage over time finish him off. And now, Saxa, maybe trying to find something in return. Now nah, he's got to back off. Go Black's got the mana there for the heal. And Aloha Dance has popped up to the top lane also. So Empire getting themselves on the board. And uh, a very nicely timed Doom there. And maybe, can they get more Silent? Moving in, it looks like they they just want to don't want to be caught out by Saxa's stun underneath the tower. Scared of maybe some TP reactions, but on the plus side, Saxa going to get some uh, levels here for the, to work towards that Laguna. AGM's been spotted out. Resolution helping to bring Empire back into this game. Could get themselves a second kill, oh. but no, too many creeps. Couldn't get the final touch, and uh, will be denied by neutrals. Yeah, that was a really hard situation for Resolution because he probably realized it was going to be daytime soon. And as soon as daytime rolls around, there's an even higher likelihood that he'll deny himself. So maybe he just overestimated his damage a tiny bit and wanted to try to get that kill before the, the next day started. So unfortunate. Oh, but... this is nice. Look at this ancient stack, Andy. Yeah, only one dragon, too. That's actually very lucky. So the new dragons have that, I think it's called like thick hide or something like that, where you get that plus armor aura or dragon hide aura. And it stacks, too. So if you have more dragons, you actually just get more armor on top of that. Only having one is actually very good because you just kill the stack that much faster. And the double damage Bane helping to whittle them down as well. That's going to put Yoku back in a little bit closer to Pycat's Viper. Pycat still sitting a 1k ahead of the T8. And uh, continues to farm it. What's Pycat deciding to build actually on this Viper this game? Nine minutes I... in, what's he got? Okay, he's okay. Is he going Midas? Midas gaming mm -hmm. for the Viper? What do you reckon? I think it's. Okay, so in a lot of games, I think that Midas is usually dependent on what either your game plan is for the team. Like, do we do we just take a late game? Do we just farm away? Or do we want to try to five man? Or if the enemy team wants to five man us, is it still worth buying a Midas? And I feel like Empire might start grouping sooner rather than later, like next night phase, and try to make stuff happen. I really thought he would just go straight for the mech. But bottom, bottom lane. lane. Indeed, moving forward, Sax. If he can find the stun, oh, oh can't quite get it here. Bringing resolution low. But TP reaction from Goblet's going to hold back the side of four clovers. And uh, also, it looks like uh, it's Yoku. Uh, oh, no, he finished off the treads. I was going to say, he did save up a bit of gold there yeah. with the close of haste. But going for the treads here. And uh, we'll see. I mean, I, when you're kind of playing behind on TA, what is the item pickup? Is it straight Desso? Do you have to skip the Blink, or is Blink still the item? Man? I think you have to go Desso no matter what, especially when you're behind, because mm. your damage is going to be lacking Dyer's already. You have a couple of heroes who can kind of start things off for you, especially Resolution on that Night Stalker. He can kind of run in, you know, start causing havoc so you can get damage in. And plus, since you're Dire, I think you kind of want the Desso to make sure that you can actually get Roche, because that's one of the key points of TA is being able to monopolize the Aegis and just make it so whenever you're off map for even like a minute or so, the other team has to address that and always be looking in the pit and always be wary of that kind of thing happening. So maybe he thinks that Blink is the choice. If you can get a Doom on somebody, Blink in Meld, that's also a good possibility. But I think Desso just gives you so much more stability in your build. Bottom lane, Swift turning and Saxa going to find themselves the tower. Mid lane, focus on to Yoku. EGM's going to get the Fisher block. Not opting to dive it here. They do have Pycat also with the uh, with Bambo Legion in the mid lane as well. Maybe seeing if they could have found a duel. It's not going to be the case. It's going to give Doom a bit of space on this top lane to start getting the pressure onto that tier one. And GM coming up to level five. Silent did opt for the drum build now. I mean, what does he get now after the phase drums? By the looks of it. 
Well, he's got a ring of regen right now, mm. so I'm kind of leaning towards maybe a Vlad's. I don't think he goes mech with his mana pool. Doom has pretty atrocious uh, starting int at the very least. His int gain is okay, so over time you can actually start to build items that cost mana, but this early on it might be a little bit too I much do for like him. this as well, though. Smoke up. The use of Nighttime Silent has got the Doom available. If they can catch out Bambo here with a wraparound. It's going to be very nice. They've dropped the lane ward down, so they're going to see any kind of reaction coming forward. And if Bambo backs up here, he's in quite a nice position for himself at the moment. They don't really want to dive past the tower unless they know that they can get that Doom out. They're going to go for it now. Bambo backing up as Resolution has forced him behind the tower and they're ready to dive straight in with a Fiend's Grip, in fact. Silence still holding on to the Doom. Maybe they can go for more now, but he is Swift to ending and he does have to reincarnate. So they're just going to pop down the Nightmare, try and get themselves away here with the Drum Charge. Scorched Death as well. Then it's Silence going to be fine. Resolution getting out as well. Fisher from EGM won't catch on to them. And uh, very nicely done there. And they still have the Doom after that. Yeah, they're just way too fast. I mean, Scorched Earth gives you that bonus point speed. Four heroes here, Swift here ending, and the Weave is lovely setting them up for this engagement. All on to four of them, Swift ending. Will get slowed down. Has the arm that's not going to save him. Will go down once. Yoku's there as well, the full five man of Empire. We're going to see a massive engagement. A TP's coming. Viper Strike onto Yoku. There's your Doom now to Swift ending, but it's a full health. Swift ending. He'll be able to get himself out. Saxa looking for a stun. Didn't quite find it. Silent now on the retreat. Swift ending's actually moving back in here. He's not scared of anything here. And it uh, looks like Empire realized that this may not be the fight for them. But the, uh, everyone forced up to the top lane, in fact. And it's going to be uh, Yoku who's actually made the most of it as he did manage to TP to bottom and take advantage of the free lane as, as the entirety of Four Clovers sitting on top. Will it just find a tier one off the back of it? So I really think in the end, Four Clovers probably get the better of this exchange. Sure, Yoku is farming at the moment, but in reality, you, you just rotate, what, three or four heroes to kill the offlaner. Fambo comes back. You end up getting forced out, you waste Doom on a hero that you pretty much can't kill, and then you lose your safe lane tier 1. So I think that Empire are probably not going to be happy with that whole thing, but they are moving around middle lane, they're trying to get something out of nothing here. But they will force TP reaction out of 4 Clover, and I don't think that they're going to want to stick around, at least for now. And it's also really important to note that with Doom being the way that he is right now, just throwing a Doom on someone is not good enough. You need to actually be in range of them with Scorched Earth on to have enough damage to kill. And that's why you saw Swift ending just being like, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll just run back in. Level 1 Doom ticks for like, I don't know, 20-something damage, maybe a little bit less than that. And he also has uh, Armlet on. So if he has that uh, Armlet deactivated, he actually gets 7 health regen from it. And Yoku? I was going to say, if they can get a stun onto him from either the Wraith King or the Earthshaker, they could certainly look to go for it. I'd probably be happier trying to take down this tier 1 first to make sure there's no TP backup coming in from Empire. There's a bit of a wraparound as they're coming into the river here. Go Black on the front lines. And they're not going to go for it, and they are going to let the side of 4 Clovers take the tower. Elsie getting the final touch there, and now just 30 gold away from picking up that blink. So we're going to see Bambo getting that line very shortly. In the jungle at the moment, Yoku taking advantage of this. And it doesn't look like 4 Clovers... Yes, Deck Barker, they're coming up now. They don't really have a gap closer. They do need that blink to come out of Legion really before they can punish Yoku for these kind of actions. And yeah, Yoku's going to get himself back out scot free here. I got to say, it's impressive that Yoku has managed to pull himself back into this situation in terms of CS. Because during the laning phase, Pycat yeah, had a pretty terrible, gigantic yeah. lead. And between that ancient stack and just overall map efficiency, Yoku has managed to pull himself out of a pretty huge deficit. And we are going to, in fact, see the Vlads up here on silent. Pretty standard stuff coming out from the Doom. And this is kind of why I feel like when you see a Doom build drums, it should be pretty easy to just assume, okay, well, they're they're going to five, man. You know, they got Dazzle, so they got the Weave. They got yes. some frontline heroes. They got a good amount of Disable. And that's why I kind of figured Pycat might just go straight for the mech, but he's sitting on top of 1,900 gold with his Midas right now. Radiant Next item choice could just be Aghanims. I think it's really strong against what Empire have, that lower okay. cooldown in the Viper Strike, you know, yeah. with these really yeah. tanky frontline heroes just running at you. Having that to be able to throw out consistently can be quite nice. Also, mech is still good. I mean, he's going to have it maybe, what, like 16, 17 minutes if he decides to buy it now. Not a horrible timing. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, maybe potentially, the fact that they put Yoku in the mid, someone who we're kind of used to seeing in the offlane. And obviously, offlane being one of those roles where you don't get a lot of CS earlier, but to be a good offlaner, you come back in, you find those gaps across the map, and, and he's done exactly that. So maybe they were like, you're going to have an awful time in lane, but... Yoku being Yoku, we trust that you you are going to be able to bring yourselves back in. And as you said, he's he's certainly closed that gap at the moment. Still uh, 700 behind the Viper, but that's nothing nothing major. 16 minutes in, we are going to see a go. smoke up from Empire. Well, let's see, it's going to be interesting to see who gets the jump here, who can manage to initiate this one. They're going to head straight down 
Now they're going for Roche, they're going to move into the jungle. I think they just Roche. They have Vlad and Desso. Yeah. yeah. This is actually a very good move from Empire. Yeah. Something that is, I mean, maybe they can anticipate it if you're for Clover, but it's going to be so quick. By the time they do, it's it's already way too late. Like this thing is dying instantly. Jesus, that damage. Okay, so everyone's kind of grouping up for four clover. I think they also kind of want to smoke wanna, here. Do they want to fight this? I actually, they don't have a smoke. But if Empire are able to walk away from this, I'd say it's actually fine for them. Because here's the thing, right? Like Viper is a hero, not really the great, like greatest late game hero by any stretch. Bambos had a pretty good start, so his snowball potential is there. But it's 17 minutes in almost, and he has yet to get a single point of damage from dueling. Right, and that's kind of how LC stays relevant in the game a lot of the times. Oh, they're hiding in the fog here. Silent, moving in. EGM spots him, they know that he's there now. That's gonna be the slow answer section. Pycat, night time comes oh. out. They're ready to fight. This EGM's kind of been left alone here, and they have popped the Doom down on him. He will be the first casualty. Now, can they find anything more? Look at the speed of Silent, zooming straight in towards Pycat. The slow catches onto the Viper and the Lena. Then we got level death bringing stacks low. Swift Danny coming to the Viper. The Fiend script onto Pycat. They'll get themselves a double kill for Doom now. They're trying to desperately fight back into this four clovers. Healing up Swift Danny, goes in for the great fire stun onto a low dance. Oh, the Echo Slam does finish off the Bane, but that's it. Swift Danny, he's gonna lose the uh, the ultimate here. Now, do Empire want to still fight? Now, they're trying to run away. Swift ending, blinking forward. Gets this done onto Resolution. He has been left behind by Go Black and Yoku, and now there's your jewel. So they will lose one hero. They'll lose the Night Stalker. But nonetheless... Well, they lost two. They lost the band. Yes, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so it was a uh, two for... Just, was it two just for, the two for... Two for three, because EGM yeah, bought back. Yeah, that's right. EGM bought back, and they did manage yeah. to get the ult away from, from the Wraith King. So, I've got to be honest, Empire... Are fighting at a level that was a lot better than the kind of the start of this game because at the beginning the lanes weren't great you know four clovers had quite a sizable lead in terms of farm but empire doing what i kind of seem to remember classic empire doing well they kind of turn up to fights they may be a little bit behind in terms of farm but but they fight as if they're at the same level and at times like this they come out with even trades it was just a very fortuitous engagement. EGM started off by missing his fissure. Like, he he tried to block Silent so that he would be isolated from the rest of his team, but the problem was EGM was actually away from his team because as soon as that TA trap was dropped by Yoku, oh, bye -bye. everyone dealt a split. Is he going to go straight for the duel? He is here. I don't know if he's going to have the damage, but Silent, he managed to get the score stuff out before this. So it's going to be a hard duel to win. They may still get the kill. No, they're not even going to bother. They're going to leave Silent to it. Fisher catches out Yoku in the mid, maybe looking for a wraparound four clovers from the dire jungle. No, they're not going to are they going to close in towards the mid lane? Oh, it's Lina leading the way. They do still have a Laguna Blade, but Yoku's going to head back into the jungle. So, I mean, we're already seeing now the jewel in itself is it's going to be very hard to kill Silent because he is incredibly tanky if he gets out the Scorched Earth. And the other thing, too, is he's going straight for BKB. Yeah. So he's got the Mithril Hammer. He's got the Ogre Club. He only needs about 1,000 gold, maybe a tiny bit more. And which for Doom, 1,000 gold is like two or three minutes of farm, maybe sometimes less if you're just totally free farming. So. I'm a bit concerned for the mid game right now of Four Clover. The laning phase was fantastic, but I feel like PyCat's item build is not really, it, it's not what I think the team actually needs at this point. And sure, it's gonna give you some more late game potential, but in the late game, what are you gonna do if you just get doomed during a fight and you're the one who's carrying the majority of the farm? Because for me, if I'm playing Doom in this game, I'm silent, I'm thinking to myself, I'm never dooming the Wraith King unless it's his second life, which is very rare that that's gonna happen. I'm only dooming the Viper or the LC, or maybe the Shaker if I catch him before he can blink or something like that. Yeah, right? before like, he gets the spell. Yeah, like that, that's maybe the one other hero that you would think about. So I'm probably getting doomed quite a bit. And bottom lane, here we go. There is no Viper Empire. right now. Empire. His resolution just going to go straight in. He wants to. And this reduced vision, I mean, Nightstock is such a nasty area to play against. And here we go, they've dropped the trap, going straight in. Doom is going to be put onto Swift Ending here. So they are going to use it on the Wraith King, even though he does have his ult. They have lost LC, and now they'll get the kill. They'll bring Wraith King down once. Laguna bringing Silent low. Pycat trying to work his way through this Doom, but Doom might actually get away from this. We'll be able to waltz out. Pycat, Melt Strike to the face, and now the right click from Yoku in the final void. Now there's the Echo Sand, but it's a little bit too late. Egen will get dropped as well. Triple kill for Yoku. Now they might be able to bring down the Wraith King for a second time here. Trapped in the trees. He'll go down. It's going to be a team wipe against the side of four Clovers an empire with some very impressive team fight action on this bottom lane. Okay, so even dooming the worst possible target, they still destroy four clover, like just walk all over them. I'm even fairly certain that during that entire fight, they didn't even lose the agency. Just, yeah, Yoku's fine. You know, no big deal. And this is 
another thing that's really oh hard boy. to deal with is when you have this many heroes who are so tanky, you have the Vlad Zora, you have the Drum Zora on top of that, and you have to deal with Weave. Like, this team is built to fight at this stage in the game. And, and how do you stop this kind of push? I mean, it's so terrifying at this point coming out from the side of Empire. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going on the tier two. Four Clovers aren't going to want to do anything about that. They're going to have to kind of bank on the high ground defense when these pushes come in. Because they're, they're looking to... And I've got to be honest, Yoku, incredibly impressive. I kind of felt that we may see something like that because I just remember his, his outright... Start, just terrific Magnus performances on the off lane, and, and he's bringing it back with this TA in the mid because he's got four kills, three assists, hasn't died at all, and I guess that's the key thing. Even though in lane he was losing out CS, he never fed. Yeah, that, that's really key. And the other part of it too, there was a little bit of roaming, I think, towards mid. I think he got like fissured once or twice from EGM, but that was about it. It's not like you said, he didn't die, he didn't have his lane like get fed kills or anything like that where PyCat just gets like a six minute Midas or five minute Midas. It was just kind of like, okay, I'm not winning. I got an ancient stack going for me. The rest of my supports are stacking the jungle as well. I can recover. It's not a huge deal. Viper is not known for being a flash farmer by any stretch. And speaking of ancient stacks, we have another one over here for the side of Empire. They just really seem to be playing better than I expected, to be honest. Like, looking at this matchup, sure, Empire has had a rough go of things lately. Maybe they just, uh, maybe they finally got themselves out of that rut. Oh, Saxa, he's got to be careful how close he comes to them because Resolution is straight in there with the Void. I popped down the Poison as well from Go Black. And the fight's going to kick off. They've got the Nighttime Aloha Dance moving forward. He has oh. got the Fiends Group available and Unleen <laughs> getting blown up by the damage from Yoku. Now with the Nine Round Swift ending, Pycat throwing the Viper Strike down onto Resolution. Bambo moving forward. I don't know if he wants to duel anyone in this situation though because Go Black is there on the sideline, has got the Shallow Grave. And now Silence turned up as well. BKB complete, 1700 gold on top of it. Doom is online. Moving forward onto EGM there. Just harassing, bullying the side of Four Clover. And now Silence just waltzes in. BKB's pop. There's your Fiend's Grip onto Swift Denny. He does have Reincarnate available. Doom onto EGM. And EGM's got to get himself back to base. Almost certainly going to die. They might be able to get the deny out. They will. Bambo does deny him. But again, Empire just, just they're bordering on unstoppable it kind of seems that every engagement four clovers just seem a little bit of a, at a loss at what to do against this aggression it's mainly the the doom and the resolution oh, night Bambo. stalker and it's Bambo is in. so dead I think it was go black who was picked up they gave the gem to night stalker oh. with the ags as well you are not going to be able to sneak in like that nightmare setting up a potential kill onto Pycat and indeed they move in light tracker rate does hold back silent by Yoko now with the one hit with the two should find the kill does get it double kill for the TA and now with the BKB from Yoki, she's going to stand on the front lines, get that Desolate here onto the tower, and the push will come out. Three heroes down at the moment, they do have EGM back, does still have that Echo Slam. But this is 24 minutes in, and four Clovers bordering on potentially losing racks. They're going to need something big to stop this silence, still with the Scorched Earth, healing back up. It's going to be your Ray Fire Blast, Saxon moving forward, looking for the follow-up Light Strike. Has got a Laguna here as well, with the Shallow Grave coming out nicely from Go Black to ensure that this Doom is not going to get popped by the Lina. And Empire done for now. They will have a little bit of mercy, but tier three down, 13 to five. And some fantastic play here from the Dyer. This is the kind of stuff I love to see out of Empire because whenever I used to watch them play, it always seemed like when they played at their best, it was normally strategies like this where you're not really split up too much. They don't want to split push. They don't want to rat you down. They just want to fight. And most of the time, they're very good at timing their smokes. They always get targets out of it. They're very good at taking map control away from the enemy team. And it feels like this lineup is built for just that. Even in a laning phase that you could easily say was subpar, they say, you know what? No big deal. Relax. We have our mid game timing. We know it's going to be strong. Our Doom's still farming. He's going to get those aura items. And we're just going to go and we're going to kill him. Yeah. And now an extra aura added to the mix here with Bane finishing off his mechanism for the side of Empire. I mean,. Yeah, this, maybe this is it. We talked about the potential of this patch being the, the time for Empire to come out with these a little bit different drafts. And, and well, with Heroes, or well, the Doom, of course, someone that we've seen come back. Four Clovers to do anything with this smoke. They're going to be walking blindly into enemy territory here almost. And I mean, and that's it. They, they're smoked up, but they're, they're just too scared to go any deeper than the river. I mean, even if they fight on this bottom lane, I don't know if it's going to be a good one for them because Yoku hiding in the tree line. He's ready with the counter gank. And yes, Bambo's going to go in front. It's, they have to try, though. It's, it's so hard for them to fight into the side of Empire. The problem is, the last couple of engagements, Empire have been the ones getting the jump. Yeah. So every single time that happens, 
and again, we even talked about how you, there was a Doom on Swift Ending, which is pretty much the worst possible target, and they still, like, 5-0. Don't even lose Ages, so they realize now, 4 Clover think, okay, we need to be the ones who get the jump in order to make anything happen in these engagements. Otherwise, we're going to get Weave cast on us. There's going to be a Shallow Grave that we have to worry about. And there's three insanely fast frontline heroes that are running at us. So we can't get to the Bane. We can't get to the Dazzle. Like, we can't stop that control and just any kind of healing or Grave coming out. And that's really the issue that they've been having, is no matter who they focus, they have to fight under Weave, they have to fight against the Grave, they have to fight against Full Duration Fiend Scripts. There's just not, nothing to stop them. I mean, they get... Getting a little bit braver here. They have forced the lane out to the tier two. Yoku now with the Yasha on top of the Desert. Uh, Desert 2k gold as well. And uh, looks like they will get away with this tower. Empire not wanting to fight into this one. Maybe waiting for a, for a bit more of a push to come out and wanting to play it safe here. They don't want to throw anything away. They, they certainly have got the, the lead and the hold on this game at the moment. And yeah, this smoke on Bane. Aloha Dance ready for the gang to go out themselves and see if they can catch someone from the side of Four Clovers. And Four Clovers, they're thinking about Roshan, and they are going to go in. There is a trap there, oh, though. Oh, God. And this could be incredibly painful for the Radiant if they stick around. Swift ending backing up. Pycat as well. They sent something's up. The Weave has been dropped. And here's Night Time. Resolution trying to close in. Who's he going to be able to catch? Will he get a void onto Pycat? Yes, he will. The slow's there. And EGM from the high ground. Oh, beautiful Doom. Stopping EGM from getting that Fisher off and blocking off the lineup of Empire. Swift ending trying to fight. Bambo going straight in with the duel to go back. But there's your Nightmare. Disrupting the duel back and forth, back and forth. Yoku just cleaning up. He's already found the kill on Sasaxa. Silent will manage to drop the Lena as well. Lena and the Legion down at the moment. Pycat just getting himself away. The Fisher from EGM. GM will save him and GG is called is all too much for four clovers and as we can see there the laning stage net worth XP slowly going in favor of four clovers but suddenly the fights began and Empire they were just absolutely on form with this match the five man Dota came and the five man Dota conquered that's pretty much how it went as soon as they see the build up on silent and I, I saw the Midas on Pika and I was really kind of questioning that choice and a lot of the time I'm okay with Midas just because a team can outplay the deficit that the Midas puts you in but imagine if even for like one or two of those fights they had an early game mech at the very least it forced